So, Jack Carr, this is it. We are here. The Hemingway typewriter. Yep, and we would not be here today if it were not for you reaching out in January. I think so. To think let so. me know that there was some, or yep, that there was some uh, Hemingway stuff up right. for auction. This, uh, what's in this box was uh, was one of those one of those things. And upon which he wrote. Movable feast. Movable feast. Yep. Right. This would not exist. And what's even crazier is that you let me know about it. I was all into it. I was got. I, I watched a, a movie about typewriters. All right. of a sudden, I got all excited about old typewriters. And then a fan sent me this. And the third novel, uh, Savage Son, starts with a Hemingway quote. And that quote is, uh, there's no hunting like the hunting of man, and those who have hunted armed men long enough and like it never care for anything else thereafter. And that's how I started the third novel. So it's, uh, it's, it's such an honor to have this and have a fan uh, gift it to me uh, who wishes to remain Which anonymous. Which incredible. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So gift. let's open it up yeah, and hope that it's not like Al Capone's vault. Let's do it, yeah. We're yeah. I'm going to open it with this knife from Half Face Blades, which is yeah, the knife that that's, uh, this is the blade that is used in the third novel. So, so we took a Skinner. moment to choose that in particular, yep. right? Not just any knife, but yep. this knife. To have a book start with that Hemingway quote and have this be the blade that uh, is featured really in the, in the third novel, it seemed like this was the right one. Okay, well, I'll be your Vanna so. White here. Let's so do it, I'll all right, let's do it here. here Another box, box in the box. Whoa, no way. Oh, look at that, that's incredible. Well, should give it a shot. There you go. Let's see. Let's see. I'm just going to go with the fact that the last guy that typed on this was Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> so be very thoughtful about it. Let's go. Uh, Can we get a letter? Oh, we do. Look at that. There's no hunting like the hunting of man. And then boom. Yep. So I want to talk today about your new book, Savage Son. Right? Yes, sir. Your third book. It did start out with a Hemingway quote, so it's it appropriate that we're sitting by Papa's uh, typewriter. Yeah. But the story itself was, I think, an amalgam and an homage, as you mentioned when the book came out, of two stories that I also read that, as in talking, we, we yeah. noted that we read it about the same time yep. in our life, and that is uh, Richard Connell's um, The Most Dangerous Game. That's right. As well as Louis L'Amour's Last of the Breed. That's right. That's right. Yeah, even back in sixth grade, I knew, well, I knew back then that I wanted to serve my country in uniform as a SEAL and then eventually write fiction in this genre, kind of like all the books that I was reading at that stage by guys like David Morrell and Nelson DeMille and A.J. Quinnell and J.C. Pollock and Mark Olden and all these guys in the 80s that really taught me how to be a writer by showing me what I liked to read. Uh, but even back then in sixth grade when I read Most Dangerous Game, I knew that one day I would write a novel that paid tribute to that short story. And, and, and I wanted cool. to start with it, actually. I wanted to start with this. Is that Savage right? Son was the one I wanted to start with. So when I when I started down this path and made that decision in my head very deliberately that uh, I am transitioning from the military and I'm now an author, I'm now a writer. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to start with Savage Son, so I wrote down six or seven different ideas. And I looked at them all on the table, wrote like one page executive summaries. And I thought, gosh, I really want to write this one because I've wanted to write this since sixth grade but the characters aren't ready yet for me to explore so James these James probably had to marinate a little bit. Exactly, so I had to introduce him to readers, right. and that was very clear that I had to start with uh, The Terminal List. Like That was how readers were gonna be introduced to James Reese and the story. And then even for the second book, I knew wasn't quite ready to explore what I explore in Savage Son, and I needed to take him on a journey of redemption, a violent redemption, but also he needed to learn how to live again. And I thought it would be disingenuous to readers uh, if I just all of a sudden plopped him up and dropped him into his next adventure without going through that transition period, like anyone has to do in you know, life that's, or anything. That's an interesting point because uh, he didn't, he doesn't get involved in not to give away the plot, so I guess we gotta be a little careful here. Yeah. He doesn't, he, he goes for friendship and for love, not for violence or revenge this time. Yep, and so that was also very deliberate in that uh, I wanted each story to have its own theme. And the first one is really a story of revenge without constraint. Second one is that story of violent redemption. And the third one explores the dark side of man through the dynamic of hunter and hunted. So as soon as I finished that second novel, I knew that it was time for Savage Son. It was time, yep, exactly. Yeah, the four books that really um, influenced the storyline of Savage Son were uh, Most Dangerous Game, 
Last of the Breed by uh, Louis L'Amour and uh, Rogue Mail by Jeffrey Household, right. which is written in 1939, kind of on the eve of war, right. uh, World War II. And then First Blood by David Morrell back sure. in 1972. So. so I think you took a risk and you pulled it off. Thank and, you. And blending those and doing an homage, but also doing it in a creative enough way to take your character into that. Let's talk about the concept of fear and how fear found its way into Savage Son. I can right. think of several examples, but in your mind, how did that concept resonate? Yeah, well, there's the some story. specific word choices, actually, for fans of the genre, fans of the short story, for those that are uh, going to then maybe catch up and read it if they haven't read it in a long time, or maybe read it for the first time, be introduced to it by through Savage Son. Uh, but there's some distinct word choices throughout the novel that, uh, that pay tribute to Most Dangerous Game. Uh, also, a couple of word choices that pay tribute to, to Rogue Mail, to Last of the Breed. So I put those in there as little nuggets for people if they want to either search them out or be surprised and make that connection. Right themselves in there and and fear is in uh, the first uh, chapter in the in the prologue actually that introduces uh, the reader to this storyline and uh, it's a, I don't know how much to, to give away but it's a person being hunted and feeling like they're being hunted for the first time yeah so I think we should we should at least give the listeners here the benefit of the doubt that basically James Reese goes to help a friend from the previous novel um, who is a, uh, a brother seal as well as, a, as, as basically a family member also, mm -hmm. who finds himself on an island where he's being hunted by a, uh, a Russian, yep. right? Uh, who's connected to organized crime and basically yep. has his own civilian hunting, hunting people. And one of the things that, uh, one, one line that stuck out there is, evil is a tangible thing with wavelength just as sound and light. Right. So have you did you have you found that in your career as a SEAL in dealing with evil bad guys? Yeah, so evil is really woven into the, the storyline, each of the of the storylines, because you have to make a reader one sympathetic to your protagonist right. because the protagonist is going to in these stories anyway, is going to do some things that the reader is going to have to forgive him for. So you have to have in, in this case a likable protagonist uh, who has uh, been put up, put in the corner and has to essentially fight his way out. And um, the evil part of it comes in in that there are some sympathetic characters in here that are bad guys, but they're not necessarily evil. Uh, they might do some things that are harsh to our way of thinking. If you uh, grew up in a very safe environment and, uh, and didn't have to deal with uh, anything like that, didn't have your, your life wasn't threatened by another human being ever. Um, so there are some semi-sympathetic characters that fall on the, the bad guy side yeah. of things. Uh, but then there are also evil characters. And, uh, and that is, is who I'm dealing with at the start of this novel in the prologue and who is uh, one of the antagonists that, uh, that moves the story forward. Uh, as well, but he is, uh, yes, connected to organized crime, connected to, to Russian intelligence services, but he also has a sickness uh, in that he needs to hunt people. Right. James Reese was acting out of emotion for the most part, right? And in, in certainly in terminal lists, without a doubt. And now the needles have pivoted the other way, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, uh, that's where I continue to go into book four is explore that even further. Because now I don't want to give too much away, but uh, uh, now he's at that stage where he has to make a decision. What's he going to do next? Like he's in that decision making phase in Savage Sun, but now he has to actually make the decision of what he's going to do moving forward with his life in this fourth novel that's, uh, that comes out next April. I really enjoy writing uh, kind of the author's note, the preface to these things. Uh, all three have been very personal so far and uh, not just the preface, but the actual writing. And I thought when I started that it was just gonna be uh, a story that people would take out of Hudson News on their way to their flight and then you know, fly to the Bahamas and have a great beach read. And as soon as I started writing, I realized that it was gonna be a much more personal endeavor. And I was gonna take things that happened to me in Iraq and Afghanistan and take those emotions behind those events and apply them to a completely fictional narrative. And in the preface, and I've had so many people reach out to talk about the preface and I've had veterans and I've had law enforcement guys that have been involved in shootings reach out and say that, man, those prefaces really meant a lot to them. Interesting, yeah. give me an example. And because I talk about how it's, it's okay, like what we did downrange is natural. And a lot of times we have been programmed to think that if you do certain things that are natural, that would have been natural for most of human existence, whether that's the defending yourself, your tribe, 
from another tribe, another person, um, or hunting, put food on the table to, like we were here because we had ancestors that were good at both of those things. And they used the same tools for both. Uh, the very same tools that you defended the tribe with were the same tools that you put food on the table with. Um, and that it's okay to do those things. Like we've been programmed that it's not okay. There's something wrong with you. If you do these things, then you need some counseling immediately. Right, right. When it's actually a very, there's not a more natural thing you can do than defend your tribe, defend your family, defend the gift of life, and put food on the table, provide sustenance for that family. Um, so yeah, for the very slightest part of all of human existence, this is the only time it's been, we've been told that it's not right or it's not natural to do those things, uh, when in fact it's the most natural of things you can do. So, big themes, fear, evil, reason. Mm -hmm. Hunting versus murder. Yeah, and right. the reason part yeah. also comes into play with what I did for those 20 years in the military, well, particularly after 9-11, but that's what the enemy's doing. I mean, you're, you're not just hunting someone that's just walking down a trail waiting to get killed. No, they're adapting, they're learning, they're figuring out how to hunt you as well. So uh, it's a constant game of adaptation, which requires reason. Well, congratulations on this, this third novel. It's Thank fantastic. You. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading it more than once and Thank reading the, the novels that inspired it again nice. to get context. And it only enhanced the experience to do that. So I oh, encourage you. your readers to do that too, because it won't take away from it. It will only enhance it.